For the first strat, you'll be playing Cade on Basement and Chalet. Now, if you want to electrify these two walls for absolutely free, all you have to do is come up to Dining. Then, with either your Revolver or your TCSG, you can put a hole under this desk here and throw your Cade Claw all the way to the other side of the desk. As you can see, this Cade Claw will fully electrify both of these two walls for absolutely free, and it's very hard for attackers to find that Cade Claw. The second Cade Claw's purpose is electrifying this hatch in Dining as well. To do this, all you'll need to do is open this barricade here, and then throw your Cade Claw in the corner of this pillar once the prep phase has ended, just like that. The chances of them seeing this Cade Claw is very low, because their crosshair is going to be on the door the entire time. But as you can see, it perfectly electrifies the hatch, and because the Cade Claw is so far away, it's really hard to EMP. Now that was just one out of 30 different solo queue strats that I'll be going over in today's video. The second of which is going to be this Jaeger strat for Top Lore Oregon. Your first ADS is going to go exactly where I just broke this coat hanger right here. This ADS stops grenades from the doorway, and it's also unshootable from anybody on this window. The second ADS is going to go on the left side of this double window, just like this. It stops grenades from coming out of the window, and it also makes it to where if anybody's on these head holes from the window or from the wall, they can't actually shoot the ADS right there. Now for the third ADS, you have two options. You can either double stack it right next to this ADS on the wall, just like this, which is a good idea because the most common place for people to throw grenades on this site is through this doorway. Or, if you see that your teammates are setting up utility in Attic, you can put another ADS in Lower Attic right next to these chains right here. This ADS will stop any flash or smoke grenades coming from Attic, while also stopping any grenades coming from the heddles that are typically on this wall. Now for barbed wire, make sure that you put some on top white stairs, and then also make sure that you put barbed wire on the master door right here. Now we've been talking about nothing but defensive strategies. So let's go over this attacking strat for Jim on Clubhouse with Sledge. First, repel onto the highway balcony. Now, typically people will play castle for gym bedroom, so with your sledgehammer, you can easily sledge open the three castles that are on these windows. You can sledge open the construction window, you can sledge open the master window, and you can sledge open the gym window. Now, I wouldn't actually recommend sledging open the CC window because a lot of times defenders will use that to kill you, so unless your teammates have actually taken control of CC, don't sledge this open. Now, just because you picked sledge, that's three out of four castles completely gone out of castle's hands. Typically, people will save their last castle barricade for the cash door, so you can easily sledge that open. Or, they'll save it for the lodgy door on a more rare occasion. And if they do that, you can just repel up to the roof, sledge open the lodgy hatch, try to take control of lodgy, then drop Logi, and then you can just sledge open the barricade just like that. The entire point of the sledge strat is, yes, to get those castle barricades, but once you've done that, you can sledge open the Logi hatch like I did earlier, no matter if they're playing castle in here or not, and just try to put as much pressure onto Logi as possible to clear out anybody in construction if your teammates are pushing cash side. It's very, very easy to do as a solo queue player. Something a bit more challenging, though, is this grim attacking strat for CC on Clubhouse. Now, just as a side note, this is interchangeable with Capital. Firstly, the entire point of this strat is to attack rafters, and with Grim, you can easily use his hard-reaching charges that he brings to open the top of this reinforcement, and also the bottom left of this reinforcement here. Now, the first barricade allows you to sit outside of the wall and shoot anybody that's on the right side of rafters right here. It's pretty useful, especially in the early round whenever they're still rotating through the window a little bit to get utility down. The second hole is actually used so that you can go inside of Lower Garage to contest rafters. Now, you only actually want to do this once your teammates have the wall open, because once they have the wall open, it adds another angle that the rafters player has to worry about, which allows you to do your job a lot easier. Now, when they have the wall open, you can rotate in here, and after shooting out this default camera, pull out your Grim Launcher and shoot bees on the left and right side of rafters. Shooting bees here and here will make it to where if anybody is in rafters, they'll get pinged, which will make it 10 times easier for you, your teammate on the breach, or your teammate on the door to get the kill needed to secure the kill on rafters. You can use more than just two Grimbies, you can use three if you want to get the person over here, or, you know, if there's ADSs with my discs, whatever it may be, you have five B canisters that you can use, so Grim is the perfect pick for this play. But once you've taken rafters and you go up the rafters stairs and you don't have any angles to worry about, this is where the easiest part of the strat comes in. Typically, because there's head holes here, that means that this wall is soft, and Grim brings a bailiff. 
which means you can turn this wall into a rotate for your team with your bailiff, which makes it 10 times easier for you to go into the site and get the plant down because you're not having to risk your entire life by hopping through a window where you'll be contested from red stairs. If you want to do this even safer though, all you have to do is pull out a Grimby launcher and shoot it at the door of cash so that if anybody tries to contest you whenever you're walking in through the rotate, you'll know about it and you can take a much easier gunfight. Now that you've baited the plant and you've gotten the plant down, you can just kind of shoot your remaining bees pretty much anywhere to help you with the post plant. It's very easy to do if your teammates are already going for the wall, which 9 times out of 10 in a solo queue environment, if they have a brain, they'll be doing. A strat that's much less reliant on your teammates, though, is this cage strat for defending the top floor of Consulate. Now, as Kate in the prep phase, make sure that you reinforce this closet wall. Once you've done this, you can kind of just throw a Cade Claw wherever you see fit to electrify it and just leave it be for the rest of the round. Because the actual main purpose of this strat is to electrify these three walls in admin. But first, you need to make sure that they're reinforced. Once they're reinforced, you can just throw a Cade Claw in the middle of the wall just like this, and it's electrified now. The reason you do this is because a lot of ace players will repel on the window and try to ace this wall open, so having a Cade Claw here makes it a lot harder for them to do that. You can also optionally open up head holes right here if you still want to contest a little bit of that admin portion. And then you can reinforce the wall next to it so that nobody's able to shoot you from this window whenever you're inside of this room. With the changing meta of Consulate due to the fact that Pro League is discovering how to play the game, this is subject to change as it hasn't been around for that long. A strat that's pretty old and well known though is this castle strat for defending reading on Cafe. Now, as you can see, the first part of this castle strat is barricading the reading door just like this. It makes it to where they can't just open the hell door and run in for absolutely free. They have to at least waste some time or utility, which gives you time to react to. If they end up having a soft breacher, though, you should put a prox alarm next to the door so that if they do end up fast breaching it, you'll at least know about that, too. But because this castle strat is mainly top floor focused, you want to castle off the white window just like this. This makes it to where they can't just get on the white window and hold an angle whenever you rotate down white stairs if they take the top floor from you. If you want to hold the top floor though, what you want to do is make a rotate on this white wall just like this, castle off the right side of this door here to protect you from the skylight, and then castle off this double door to protect you from anybody dropping the skylight. Then make sure the wall next to it is reinforced so they don't soft breach it open, and then reinforce your two reading walls, and then reinforce these two piano walls. Now finally, as castle, you'll want a proximity alarm on this doorway right here to alert you if anyone's trying to flank you from the piano door. And then as castle, your job is to sit inside of freezer and make sure no one pushes your doorway or the new hatch drop right here. And you'll just keep playing this until they back you out of it. Then you can rotate right here and play inside of this room and hold these angles. And then once that's done, you can rotate down white or open this hatch and rotate down this hatch. It's actually pretty easy to do. The only issue is you need teammates that are reliably able to set up the site for you because as castle, you can't be making all of these feet holes and expect to actually be able to do your castle strat in time. Something that is much less reliant on your teammates, though, is this dock strat for holding the top floor of dining and kitchen on emerald plains. Now, like I said, as dock, you'll be holding the top floor, so make your way up there. Once you're at the top floor, you have a decision to make. You can either reinforce this hatch right here to make it to where if they take the top floor from you, they can't just drop the hatch. Or if you have confidence that you won't die, you can open the hatch instead, which allows a safe rotate option back to site for you. But also, if you open up the top of this wall right here, it makes it to where you can get a lot of nasty angles on the enemy attackers in this hallway. More importantly, though, if you have the reinforcements necessary to do this, you want to reinforce both of these walls in the closet on the top floor. Not only does this make it to where it's much harder for them to push you on the top floor in general, but it's also useful because you're going to be playing inside of closet. This is because with your bailiff, you're going to open up this floor right here. Once this portion of the floor is open, you have a clear line of sight onto anybody trying to go on the freezer wall, which is typically seen as the default wall for pushing the bottom floor. You can get a lot of free kills doing this, I know I have plenty of times, so I definitely recommend that you do this for as long as you possibly can, because chances are they have no idea where you're going to be shooting them from. Now the only issue you really have to face is getting flanked from top floor, but if you want to counter this, all you'll need is barbed wire on this door right here and barbed wire or a barricade on this door right here as well. And you're pretty much set for this strat. It's pretty self-sufficient and you don't need any teammates to do this. Moving it back to the attack though, let's talk about this Flores strat for attacking Hookah on coastline. As Flores, the first thing you should do is rappel up to the roof of the building. 
This is because if you get on your drone, you can see there's an air duct right here that leads to the cool vibe stairs. You're going to use this because typically there's a deployable shield right here. The reason this is important is because you can get a Flores drone, drive it into the vent, drop down the vent, and then immediately you have access to this deployable shield and it's very easy for you to blow up. As you can see, super easy. Not only this, but typically people love to play a zombie for this site. So if you don't want to go through the air duct, or maybe there's a mute jammer there, you can instead hop your Flores drone through this door right here and immediately have access to the Azami that's typically on the couch. As you can see, the explosion right here definitely would have hit that Azami. If they have the typical Azami on this pink table right here to protect their rotate, you can go to the other air duct right above Aqua, get on your Flores drone and drop it down the air duct, turn around and explode your device right on top of the table, which should easily explode right there. Now, of course, where you drive your Flores drones is entirely dependent on what utility they have and where they have it, but because having a shield or a zombie or even Fenrir for that matter on this site specifically is so popular, I guarantee you every round you'll do this, you'll get some sort of value. A much more situational strategy is this Thermite strat for attacking initiation on Theme Park. First of all, after avoiding the numerous amount of spawn peaks and runouts, you're going to repel on the rightmost window for break room, and then you're going to break it open. Once you've broken it open and you've sent a drone in right through here to make sure no one is in break room or inside of bunks for that matter, then you can repel into the window. Now, if they didn't shotgun open this entire wall to counter this strat, what you can do is put a thermite charge on the right side of this wall. The reason that you'll do that is because typically they'll have these two walls reinforced with electricity on it, but if you want to counter that, the proximity of this thermite explosion right here will blow up both of the walls and you won't have to worry about the electricity on this wall. Now, if you have smoke grenades, or if you have flashes, you can easily smoke off the left right here, or flash it off, doesn't matter, run in and get the plant down behind right here. Then you can re-smoke yourself just like that, run out, and then now you have a great angle onto anyone trying to defuse the bomb. Speaking of thermite proximity breaches though, you can do the exact same thing when attacking Kitchen on Oregon. For the strat, repel up to the roof on Small Tower. Then make a hole right here and send your drone through. Once you've droned out all of the top of small tower, you can then break open the other window just like this and hop in. Then put your thermite charge next to this ladder in small tower. Activating this thermite charge will blow open the kitchen wall for absolutely free. So if they have any electricity on it, it won't matter. And if they try to impact it from below, then you'll have a hole right here that you can use to shoot any bandits or arcades, and then you can just get the thermite on the wall the normal way. So either way, this wall is free 90% of the time. You can then use smokes to smoke off the kitchen door, just like that, and maybe even one on the couch to smoke off the shower rotate and the door right here, hop in, get the bomb down right here, and it should be a free round win. Moving it back to the defense though, let's talk about this cage strat for the basement of Nighthaven Labs. Now in the basement, one of the most important walls to keep closed is this single wall right here. In order to keep this closed though, you need to make sure they don't get on the hatch, so you'll want to reinforce that too. In order to keep this hatch closed though, you'll need rafters control to make sure they don't have on it open. So what a lot of pro league players have adapted to doing is reinforcing these two walls next to the hatch. Now, just having these walls reinforced makes it a lot harder for attackers to get the hatch open, but it also tricks them into thinking that you're playing here in the first place, which will slow them down. If you want to electrify these walls without them being able to find the Cade Claw at all, all you have to do is throw a Cade Claw just like this. As you can see on the camera, that Kid Claw electrifies those two walls. Now unfortunately, there isn't a way that you can get a Kid Claw to reach this wall and the two walls upstairs, but you can always just throw your second Kid Claw on this wall instead, or on the hatch. It's up to you. But once you've done that, I highly recommend as Cade, you definitely play on the top of rafters just to make it so much harder for them to get that hatch open. And if they're really pushing your teammates on site, and you don't need to worry about this, then you can always rotate back to site. Speaking of the rafters on Nighthaven Labs though, let's talk about how to attack it with Capitao. Now just like the rafters on Clubhouse, this is interchangeable with Grim. What you'll do is you'll spawn on this side of the building, then walk up these stairs and open this window. What you can do from here is send a drone through the window, and if you do it correctly, it won't just land on rafters, it'll land downstairs where it won't as easily be shot. Then you can go up the stairs with your drone and hop it into the leaves just like this. You can also do this in the prep phase, which I do recommend doing. So if you're able to do that, then you can just skip this step entirely in the action phase. 
Now, just like attacking rafters on Clubhouse, this strat is way more effective if you just wait for your teammates to open this wall here, because then the people on rafters have two angles to worry about instead of just one that they can easily take a gunfight with. Once your teammates have the wall opened and they're starting to put pressure on the rafters player, you can easily send in fire through the window. This will really help you flush out the person in rafters, and then you can just hop in and kill the player. The only issue with this strat is that it's pretty hard to do this, so if you want, you can easily go through this door and do the same thing, by firebolting the left and the right just like this, to make it to where they have zero place to hide. The only issue here is the gunfight that you'll be taking is way more risky, and also capital bolting this is way more risky as well, because you'll have to expose yourself to numerous amounts of angles, so it's really a pick your own poison type of deal. Once you've taken rafters, really, the hardest part is over. Typically, people will have this wall reinforced, so if you brought hard reaching charges, you can open up this portion of the wall just like this. Another thing that's very common is people will put head holes here and head holes all along this wall, so you need to watch out for any angles that can be contesting you when you're getting this wall open or you're trying to get into the site. Luckily though, Capital brings smoke grenades, so you're easily able to smoke off parts of these head holes just like this, or maybe even the doorway just like this, to cross and go into the site to either put pressure on anybody in the back site for your planter, or if you have diffuser, you can easily get the bomb down behind this desk here. It's very, very good, and as long as your teammates have the brain to get this wall open, which is typically pretty easy in a solo queue environment, you can get this strat done very nicely if you're good at Capital. Now, the only unfortunate part about this strat is you have to be good at the operator in order for it to work, which is not at all like this strat with Capcan for defending the second floor of Border. For this strat, your first Capcan device is going to go on this metal door just like this. This will make it to where if anybody is rushing up metal going through this door, they'll get hit by a cap can trap, and it's great for information purposes really, which is why I didn't put a second cap can, because it's not that common that people will rush up the staircase, so I don't want to waste more than just one cap can trap here. A much more common place that they'll push is through the hallway right here, which is why you'll put a cap can trap on the left side of this archway just like this. It's pretty uncommon, especially in the lower ranks, that people will find this Capcan trap and shoot it because they never expect a Capcan trap on archways as much as they will on somewhere like a doorway. Another archway they'll never expect a Capcan trap to be is the break room archway, just like this. Now, this one I actually recommend putting two here because it's very common people will go through this, but the Capcan trap spot here is not common at all. The last Capcan trap is completely optional. But if you notice that they're heavily rushing, I would definitely recommend putting it on this window right here, as people will commonly just rush through this window without a second thought. Another bonus tip is if you go downstairs as Capcan after the prep phase is ended, you can throw a nitro cell right here. And this nitro cell ends up being actually right here on the top of main stairs. So if you don't want to waste two Capcan traps for anybody rushing, all you have to do is get on the 90 camera right here, and once you see them rushing, you can activate your nitro cell and get a free kill. Speaking of pre-placed C4s, let's go over this Valkyrie strat for the top floor of Bank. As Valkyrie, your first camera is going to go in lobby. You're going to put it on the left side of this second plant, low, just like this. Most players will expect Valkyrie cameras to be super high in lobby, so this just blends in really well. And it provides almost the same amount of information that you need for anybody pushing lobby. So it's a really, really good camera that I find never gets found in my ranked games. The second camera is going to go for the janitor hallway right above this briefcase, just like this. This Valkyrie camera can see anybody coming through the stock double door, anybody coming from marble stairs, anybody in the hallway really, and also anybody going through the janitor door. It's a great Valkyrie camera. But like I said, the main purpose of this Valkyrie strat is for a pre-placed C4, which is going to be on the top of Square. To do this, you'll need a Valkyrie camera for here. And I recommend the one that goes behind these leaves next to these pot of plants, just like this. It's pretty hidden, even for people who are pushing the top of square. And when you get on the camera, you can clearly see the square double door, which allows you as Valkyrie to throw a pre-placed C4 right here. And then whenever you get on your camera and you see them walking through the double door, you can easily get a free nitro kill from anybody on the double door. And then once you've blown it up, even if you did or didn't get a kill, if you rotate below or your teammates rotate below, you can easily get an angle on the double door for any attackers who are pushing there later in the round. It's extremely easy to do, and you can get a lot of value out of it, even if you don't get that nitro kill just because you're playing Valkyrie. Now that we're on bank though, I need to show you this Twitch strat for attacking the basement. Now as Twitch, what you're going to do is you're going to spawn right here. But the first thing you're going to do is send a Twitch drone flying from across the map 
all the way to the other side of the spawn. That will become important later. Once you've shot out both of the default cameras here, the first thing you're going to do is throw your second Twitch drone on this drone hole right here. That's because this drone hole leads directly into the basement. More importantly though, it leads directly to the garage wall, where a lot of people play Mira. You can easily zap the Mira from this drone hole for absolutely free. So if they play Mira here, you've already gotten one out of two of the Miras just because you played Twitch and you sent a drone through here. Not only can you get the Mira here for free, but you can also get the default camera here for free as well. If your Twitch drone hasn't been shot by now, and chances are it probably hasn't, you can hop your Twitch drone down, hop it over this window right here, go through this rotate that's typically here, and now you immediately have access to the second mirror that's typically on this wall. So you've easily countered the mirror setup within the first 30 seconds of the round, and they have no idea how you did it. But if this Twitch drone gets shot before you're able to get the second mirror, or if it gets shot regardless of how many mirrors you were able to destroy, then you're going to get on the second Twitch drone that I made you throw earlier. The reason you threw it across the map in the first place is because on this Twitch drone, you're going to go down the pit just like this. Then, you're going to drive it through the tunnel, and by now, because you've wasted a lot of time getting the other mirrors, your teammates probably should have CC control, so you don't really have to worry about driving your drone through CC and it getting shot. Now, if you weren't able to get the first mirror from before, now would be the time, because they're expecting your Twitch drone to come from backside, but now you're going to have it go through this rotate and get the second mirror here. If you were able to get the mirror successfully though, this is where you get all the Goyo canisters that are typically on any of these walls for your planters. After your teammates have waited the 20 seconds it takes for the Goyos to expire, then they'll be able to plant a lot easier and you've given them a lot more time to plant which is great for your teammates. You're also able to push garage at this point or if you spawned on the other side of the map you can use your smoke grenades to help plant the bomb where you had your second twitch drone go in. You're on your drones for a lot of this portion of the strategy, but that doesn't necessarily make it a bad strategy. Now that was just 15 out of 30 different strategies that I'll be going over in this video, and these get crazier and crazier so you need to make sure that you stick to the end. Speaking of a crazy strat, you need this Azami strat for defending Master and Statue on Villa. The first part of the strat is putting an Azami on the top part of this futon just like this. This will make it to where you can play inside of Master without having to worry about this Master window. But there is another master window that you have to worry about, and that's this window right here. If you want to not worry about this window, you can always throw in a zombie barricade on the lip of this fireplace just like this. Now, you have complete cover from that window. The only thing you really have to worry about is them hopping in your closet, but if you brought barbed wire, unlike me right here, you can always set it down beneath this window so if they do hop in, you'll at least know about it and you'll be able to shoot them back. Now, in terms of site setup, a zombie does have the deagle, so you can make the head holes here and the head holes here. Now, in terms of actual necessary zombies, the final one is going to go on this window right here. It makes it to where if they're on the master window, they can't easily just shoot through the head holes and onto the rotate, so it's actually pretty necessary. But the final two Azami barricades can just be used to replenish this one, which is the one that they're commonly trying to get down the most anyways. Now that we're on Villa though, let's talk about this pull strat for defending dining and kitchen. Now because you're playing pulse, you don't really have any utility to set down in the prep phase, so I'd recommend reinforcing walls. Your first reinforcement will go on the pantry wall here. Your second will go on the middle of this china wall right here. Your third will go on this museum wall right here if there's a rotate next to it. And then the final two walls you'll want to reinforce on the museum wall here. Now after about five or so reinforcements, the prep phase should have ended, and your teammates have probably done the majority of the other side setup that you'll need. Now, as Pulse, you're actually going to pre-place a C4, right exactly here. Now, this pre-place C4 allows you to get on your scanner and see if anybody hops in closet, which is on the other side of this wall around right here. Once you've seen that they hopped in closet and they start walking through the closet door, you'll be able to blow them up with a nitro cell right there, and it usually amounts to at least one free kill in most of my ranked games when playing this site. As you can see, that's the closet door right there. It's not very complicated and it's very simple to do which is not at all the case for this mirror strat on the basement of Canal. Your first window as Mira is going to go on this wall right here for scuba. Then put head holes next to your Mira just like this, with an optional hole slightly above so that you can throw a nitro cell on the other side of this wall. This Mira primarily is for holding the yellow stairs, so if anyone's there you can easily peek off of it, but if they hop in scuba you can easily throw a nitro cell that lands right here if they push up next to this pillar. But really, that's for your teammates, because as Mira, you're going to be playing upstairs. Because you're playing upstairs, you can optionally reinforce the hatches for your teammates. 
More importantly, however, you want to reinforce the right side of this wall upstairs. And then, put a mirror on it. This will make it to where if anyone comes through this doorway, you can easily peek off of it. Now, I don't recommend having Hedl's next to this mirror because they can use that line of sight, and I don't like them being able to do that. So, I'll just shoot through the wall whenever I see it's necessary. You can optionally put it on the other side of the wall as well, either or works, I've just seen this one more commonly in my ranked games. The reason why this is so complicated is because it's very hard for you as a solo queue player to juggle all of the possible places that the attackers can push you from upstairs. Speaking of attackers though, let's talk about this attacking Maverick strat for bar on Chalet. As Maverick, you'll be pushing through the basement, so whether this is reinforced or not, it won't matter because you're playing Maverick. What you'll do is you'll make a rotate on the right side of the basement wall, just like this. Then, shoot out the default camera and start to drone yourself out in basement. This is much easier if you have a pre-placed drone somewhere in the back side of basement, that way you can drone out the front side and then quickly switch to your other camera to drone out the back side. Once you've done that, make sure that you drone up main stairs so that nobody can catch you whenever you're about to do the strat you're about to do. Which is running through the basement, running up these stairs, and immediately maving open this wall right here. Maving open this wall will make it to where if there's anybody playing Mira or just on this reinforcement, you can easily shoot them. It's very fast paced and you want to do it early in the round when they're still kind of setting up sight, that way you can get a free kill. And because it's so silent and a little bit far away from where they're playing, as you can see about 18, or sorry, 13 meters away, you can get a lot of free and silent kills this way. It's pretty easy to do. A strat that's even easier though, is this Nomad strat for attacking laundry on top floor outback. What you'll do is you'll spawn fuel pumps. Then, get on top of this side of the map and immediately shoot an air jab at the top of this window just like this. This makes it to where if they hop out the window when you're playing on this side of the map, they'll get air jabbed and you can get a free kill. The reason that you'll want to bring Nomad over Claymores is because Nomad brings 3 air jabs whereas Claymores only have 2. And because there's a lot of runouts, you need as many runout stoppers as you can get. Because the second runout you need to be worried about is this bull window runout, which you can easily put an air jab on right about here. Now typically, I don't air jab this window, because it's right next to where you're playing so you'll be able to hear it. And I don't air jab this door either, because they don't even need to run out, they can easily still just see you from this door. So what I'll air jab instead is actually this window right about here. Because you can't see this window, it's pretty hard to hear, and it makes for a really good run out. But now that you've air jabbed everything, you can kind of just attack it like you would normally. So that's it for the strat. It's very, very quick. Which is not the case for this Aruni strat on Office in Skyscraper. Now as Aruni, your first gate is going to go on the Terrace Door, just like this. A lot of people love to throw flash grenades through here to take midi bar control, so this is just a good gate to have. Now hopefully as Aruni, you brought a bulletproof camera. Because as Aruni, you're going to reinforce the middle sight wall, just like this. Then, punch two holes with your fist in the wall, just like this, and put your bulletproof camera inside. Putting it inside of the wall makes it to where it's a lot harder for them to shoot the sides of the bulletproof camera to destroy it, so this is a really good bulletproof camera that can watch if anyone hops in through the breach. It also can see if anyone is droning through these two doorways, so you can zap it and easily shoot the zapped drone, so it's a great bulletproof camera. Now, in terms of actual Aruni gate placements, your second one is going to go on this door here. This again is another very common entry point for attacker utility, so it's just great to have an Aruni gate here. Your third gate is going to go on this window, because this again is just another common attacker entry point for utility. Now as Aruni, you're going to be playing inside of Dragon. To make this a lot easier, all you need to do is barricade the T door right here, then reinforce the two T walls right here, then make sure that this drum door is barricaded as well, and then optionally, you can put feet holes all along this wall to watch if anybody tries to hop in from the karaoke window or the karaoke wall. The last place you'll want a hole is on the top of this door in Terrace right here, because it allows you to get a long angle onto anybody on this door. Now that we're already on Skyscraper, let's talk about this cage strat for defending the bedroom. Now for this site, you want the bathroom walls reinforced. Once these are reinforced, you want to cage it off. To do this, all you need to do is come to the mini bar room, then prone and destroy the yellow pillow on the left just like this, then throw your kid claw under the couch. This kid claw here will easily electrify these two walls. On that note, you'll also want to reinforce and kid off this hatch. A great kid claw for this hatch is inside of the dresser, where you'll shoot out this door and throw your kid claw inside the dresser behind the other door so it's hidden. It kids off the hatch and it's pretty hard to EMP, so this strat is almost failproof. A strat that's even better than this one though, is this Azami strat for thrown on theme park. 
The first part of this strat is throwing in a zombie barricade on this green desk just like this. This will allow you to get a tight angle onto anybody on the doorway. You can make an even tighter angle if you throw in a zombie barricade on the top of the same door just like this. Now, when attackers see in a zombied off door like this, they don't instinctually break it. They usually will just crouch under it. And if you have feed holes on this wall, they won't be able to safely break it anyways because they'll get shot from the feed holes. And because they're crouching through this door, all you have to do is aim crouch level and you'll get a headshot 100% of the time. The same logic also applies for the split door just like this. You'll be able to sit in fireplace and get a free crouched headshot just like that. And as long as your teammates aren't dumb and they're not roaming and just staying on site keeping the walls electrified and closed, this will 100% of the time get you a free round win. All that's left now as a zombie is to replenish this zombie barricade or the other two that you put down with your final two zombie barricades you have left in your pocket. Now we've talked extensively about defensive strategies, so let's move to the attack where you'll be playing Hibana for the basement of Chalet. Now after avoiding all of these spawn peaks, the first thing you're going to do as Habana is go through the big basement door just like this. Then once you've droned out this closet and all of big basement, you're going to pull out your Habana launcher and deploy pellets onto this wall here. If they have a mirror, this is even better because you're easily able to counter it. And if you also have a teammate who's pushing the trench door, they can ensure that nobody on West Main shoots your Habana pellets. Now as Habana, you've created one more angle that the defenders have to worry about, which on the basement site is really, really nice to have. But you're not going to stay in here for long, because as Habana, you'll actually end up leaving the basement and going to the trophy window right here, where you'll have your prep phase drone somewhere in trophy. Once you've droned out trophy in the top of solarium and your west main stairs, even kitchen and even dining, you're going to get out your Habana pellets and open up the hatch that's right here. Now, with this hatch open and with this wall open, it makes it way easier for you and your team to plant the bomb in the default spot and wine cellar right here. With your leftover Habana pellets tube, you could even open up a breach on this wall. You can't actually vault through this, but it's good for a line of sight. Now, if you liked this Habana strat, you'll love the one that I have for pushing the top floor. What you'll do is you'll rappel up to the two solar windows. Then after opening the left side solar window, typically the left side of this wall will be reinforced, so you as Hibana can open it up. Now, having this wall open does a multitude of things for you. For one, you now have an angle onto the closet and the closet rotate, which is pretty powerful if you sit here on repel for a good minute or minute and a half of the round. But if your teammates are also pushing solar, then you can eventually hop in this window and it makes it way easier for you to plant next to this couch and then get back on the window to deny them from defusing the bomb. If you hopped in solar, another thing that defenders do in higher elo is they'll put a rotate on this left side of the wall and a reinforcement on the right. So something you can do to make it a lot easier for you to get kills is Habana opening this wall or the one on bathroom. Doing this will allow you to get on that same rappel or sit in solar and kill anybody trying to rotate from piano into the closet. Or if you decided to do the one on the bathroom wall, you can get on the bathroom window and do the exact same thing. It's a great attack strategy. An even better attack strategy is the zero strat for attacking office on Skyscraper. As zero spawn on this side of the map, and then immediately what you're going to do is open up this single window right here. From here, you can shoot a zero camera on the right side of this luggage just like that. Oh shit. From here, you can shoot a zero camera on top of this luggage across the map just like that. This will make it to where if anyone's flanking you in the hallway when you do your push, you'll know about it. Because as zero, your next step is opening up this door right here. From here, you can send a drone in and make sure that nobody is downstairs in bedroom, in the bedroom closet, in bathroom, or in the utility closet right here. Once you've droned all of this out, you as Zero can push below right here and shoot another Zero camera somewhere in the storage closet just like this. Now, you have all the flank cams necessary in order to know if they're going to flank you at all from every side of the map downstairs possible. For the final step as zero, you're just going to be playing on the house stairs, so make sure you shoot this default camera and use your last zero camera somewhere on the office space right here to drone out if anybody is here, and then you'll be able to push up house stairs late in the round and get some free kills if you're patient enough to do so. An even better zero strat is for attacking kitchen on cafe. Now immediately what you're going to do is shoot open the double door right here, and then shoot open the double window right here. Shooting these two open allows you to get long angles onto anybody playing on the backside that you can use to contest and kill people who are playing there. Now in terms of zero camera placements, your first one is going to go on this couch and restaurant just like that. 
Because it's on a black couch, it's pretty hard to see, and you're able to turn to the left and watch if anyone comes in the hallway. Then what you'll do is shoot a zero camera somewhere in the white hallway on the shelf, just like that. This camera allows you to get the default camera, but also allows you to know if anyone's flanking you from white stairs with an audio call, and it allows you to drone out all of Christmas. It also works as a brown stairs camera flank, so it's just a great camera overall. Once you're here, you can hop in the double window and get a lot of free kills if you're aggressive enough to do so. Then, you can open up this soft wall with a hard reaching charge, or optionally, if you don't want to push the double door, you can go to the white wall right here and open up this reinforced wall as well. Your remaining two zero cameras are completely optional, so do with those what you want to. And if your other two end up getting shot, you can always use your final two to replenish those ones. It's a very good strategy if you're in a lower rank and you want to attack the backside due to the fact that nobody really holds it, and you can get a lot of free space and free kills doing so. Moving it back to the defense, let's talk about this maestro strat for defending the basement of Consulate. The first thing you want to do when you spawn in is try to run on top of this trash can just like this. Once you're here, you can throw up a maestro camera on the top of this wall right here, and unless attackers take the time to get on this trash can, which will probably get them killed, this maestro camera is pretty safe. Your next maestro camera will go on the left side of this red car, just like this. With these two maestro cameras combined, you should have no issue trying to deny the default plant as well as any drones that come through this drone hole at all. Now typically you'll have headles right here. If you don't want them knowing if you have players here with a drone, you can easily put an observation blocker behind these head holes. The same exact thing can be said for these head holes here, and these head holes here. Now because typically people will also put head holes on either the left side or the right side of this wall, the last maestro camera I'll recommend that you do is going to go on this refrigerator, or if the head holes are on the left, you can put it on this pillar right here. This will allow you to get information if anyone's pushing the hallway on the backside, which is pretty important because a lot of people like to drop the hatch and do that. It's still a pretty new map, so some of this is subject to change. Speaking of new maps, let's talk about this layer strategy for top floor with Cade. Now, as you probably already know, this is the default wall that you'll need to reinforce. If you want a Cade Claw that can keep this electrified from below, all you'll need to do is throw a Cade Claw right next to this AC duct right here. As you can see, the wall is now electrified. The second most common wall that people will open is this wall. If you want to keep this electrified, all you'll need to do is come into projector room and throw a kid claw right here. As you can now see, the wall's electrified. It's very easy to do, and you don't need to be a good player at all to do this. Which is not at all the case for this Azami strat on top floor Nighthaven Labs. For this strat, the first Azami barricade you'll need is on the corner of this shelf just like this. Optionally, you can also put it on this doorway, but I find that this gets in the way a lot, so I personally like the one on the shelf that allows you to rotate a little bit easier. If you put it a little lower as well, your feet won't be exposed, so there's that too. But mainly as a zombie, just like on Clubhouse, you'll be holding rafters. Your first barricade is actually going to go on the left corner right here. This makes it a lot safer for you to hold rafters and you won't be exposed to this door. If you optionally want to, you can also put this a little bit more to the left and get a huge prone angle onto the door through the crack of this pixel right here. Because you're playing rafters as well, make sure that these two walls are reinforced with optional head holes or a rotate on this wall. The final important Azami is going to go on rafters covering this grate right here. With this one, again, you can get that angle I was talking about earlier. It's very nice to have. It also makes it to where you can play on rafters without having to worry about this door right here. Now, once you get flushed out of rafters and you go through this rotate or this door, it's time to play in sight, where you can actually prone on this desk and get a long angle through this drone hole on anyone's feet who's inside the closet trying to get the wall open. You can also put an Azami barricade on this shelf to make it to where you're a lot more safe from that doorway, so it's a great strategy to do. But with that out of the way, that's it for this video. My name's Alco, check out this next video, and I'll see you there. Later.